So this week we're going to be exploring chemical kinetics and we're sort of stepping back from the SAMs for a minute to make sure that we have a good handle on kinetics before we move on. Um, the reaction that we're going to be investigating is crystal violet, which is this nice um, pretty ring structure um, of a molecule and it's an ion. So it comes as a salt, where the counter ion is chloride. Um, if we react that with hydroxide, then it makes a very similar molecule. Um, but you'll notice that this carbon in the center of the molecule in crystal violet is sp2. And when we react it with hydroxide, now the carbon in the center is sp3. So we go from a three bonded carbon to a four bonded carbon. And that changes what we call the conjugation. So these double bonds, you can see that every carbon here is an sp2 hybrid carbon that makes a big network of sp2 hybrid carbons. And those pi bonds allow electrons to move around freely. Um, that molecule, crystal violet, is a nice purple color, right? When we react it with hydroxide and we break that conjugation in the center, so now we have three separate rings here that are not connected to each other, um, then that molecule is colorless. So we're going to be looking at how fast this reaction proceeds and we're going to be determining the rate law for this reaction. Um, so as we move through this uh, tutorial, we have crystal violet is going to be uh, abbreviated CV, right? And the hydroxide ion is abbreviated OH minus. Um, so here's our generic rate law, right? We know there's going to be a rate constant, and then we know that each one of the exponents for these two pieces, x and y, those have to be determined experimentally. So that's what we're going to be doing in lab. Um, our main vehicle or our main observation for this is going to be, again, that pretty purple color from crystal violet is going to be decreasing as we go along um, because we're going to be reacting away crystal violet and creating this colorless form instead. So that unknown rate law, we have two approaches for determining rate law exponents. Um, we are going to experimentally determine the rate constant and the exponents in the rate law. And those two experimental approaches that we could use are the initial rates approach, um, where we do multiple experiments, where we change the initial concentration and we see how the rate changes. Um, and then the second approach is the integrated rate laws, which is to watch um, the concentration of a species change over time. Um, and then we can plot that in multiple different ways to see which way is uh, yields the straight line plot. And then that straight line plot tells us about what the order of the reaction is with respect to that reactant. To sum up the integrated rate laws, um, you have this table uh, from your notes from class. Um, here's the order, zeroth order, first order, second order. Um, you'll notice that these are all for only one reactant, um, which I'll touch on in a second. Um, here's the math piece of the integrated rate laws. And then here is the straight line plot that you would get if a reaction is zero order. Then when you plot uh, concentration versus time, you'll get a straight line. The slope of that straight line is minus the rate constant. If it's first order, you'll notice you don't plot concentration versus time to get a straight line. Instead, you plot the log of concentration versus time to get a straight line. And if it's second order, then the plot of one over the concentration versus time would give you a straight line plot. So we can collect a set of data, we can plot it in each of these three ways, and whichever way gives us a straight line plot will indicate um, which order uh, the reaction is with respect to that reactant. So in the integrated rate law approach, this is really great as long as we can monitor the concentration over time. So we can do that with crystal violet because we can see it, right? So we're going to use absorption spectroscopy here. And the key is that we want to make sure that we run this reaction in a way where CV is going to change, the crystal violet is going to change, but we don't want hydroxide to change very much. Um, so in general, our hydroxide concentration is going to be a lot larger than our crystal violet concentration so that over the course of the crystal violet being consumed, we don't see a huge change in the hydroxide concentration. So hydroxide will be essentially constant. We're going to measure the crystal violet consumption over time, right? And that's going to tell us something about um, 
Oh, there we go. Our crystal violet was consumed. You'll notice that the hydroxide didn't change very much. Um, and so we can simplify our rate law um, to say that hydroxide concentration is essentially constant and we have our rate constant times the hydroxide concentration with its exponent um, is going to be lumped into this what we call pseudo rate constant. Now, we can watch crystal violet change over time. We can use that integrated rate law approach to figure out which um, order the reaction is with respect to crystal violet. That's going to give us our X um, exponent. So determine the order of the reaction with respect to crystal violet. So determine that exponent X from the best fit linear plot. So which one fits the best? Um, that's going to give us X. Now that pseudo rate constant K prime, right, is actually the hydroxide concentration raised to some power times K. And we've been assuming that that's constant um, because crystal violet, right, is gonna be in much lower concentration. So how does the pseudo rate constant change as hydroxide changes? That's basically how we're going to determine um, that exponent for Y or the order with respect to Y. So um, we're going to investigate how K prime or that pseudo rate constant changes as a function of hydroxide concentration. So we're going to treat this problem like an initial rates problem. So you can see that this uh, pseudo rate constant expression looks just like a rate law, right, where we would have rate equals K times the reactant raised to the Y power. And so uh, that example of different experiments um, measuring the initial concentration of the reactant and then measuring the rates, okay? In this case, we're going to change the initial concentration of hydroxide, right? And instead of measuring the rate, we're going to measure K prime. So the vehicle for this is still to measure the, um, the degradation of crystal violet, right? So we're going to consume crystal violet. We're still going to watch that over time. The straight line plot is going to give us that K prime or that pseudo rate constant. And then that's going to be our, our data here in this table. So we should be able to use the initial rate um, problem strategy in order to solve for the exponent of hydroxide. So crystal violet, um, again, we're going to be watching the consumption of crystal violet by using absorption spectroscopy. So uh, the absorption of uh, crystal violet over time, right, is going to decrease. So don't forget Beer's law. Um, and go back and look at that um, from your notes from last semester. Um, remember, Beer's law is the absorption that we measure is equal to E, which is the molar absorptivity. Now this piece is the wavelength dependent piece um, and molecule specific piece. B is the path length um, of the cell that we use to measure the solution and that's typically one centimeter. And then concentration is the concentration of crystal violet over um, in, in molarity. So when we do our rate laws, we need to um, measure the concentration over time right? Um, but what we'll be measuring is the absorption over time. So you're going to have to figure out how to get from absorption to concentration um, and go back and review um, your color wheels and your absorption um, spectroscopy um, before you do the quiz for this pre-lab.